Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Thursday, uh, September 12th, and I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And uh, before I dive into this trade plan, this isn't going to be a very long trade plan. And a big reason is because uh, these indices are now pushing almost up into all-time highs. We are getting... Uh, uh, just in the last, you know, this week, pretty much, we're getting a super, super annoying, just slow, slow, slow grind to the upside. We're not seeing too much two-sided price action right now, and it's, it makes it way difficult to trade. We're completely out of structure, and you can see how we just had Trump uh, just said he's going to delay these tariffs by two weeks. And so what that did is that spiked these indices about half a percent. And so we're kind of seeing even higher movement right now. And so when we look here, though, I want to show you this isn't going to be a very long trade plan. It's just not much to talk about. It's very difficult. I'm not gone, right? And it can be very difficult to predict price action with no structure and with Trump Trump tweeting and some fundamental money being moved right now. But I want to make sure that people understand. I want to show you this daily chart, what I consider the eagle view. And you can kind of see what's going on whenever you feel like price, because this is how I feel. I feel like price is kind of in a tough spot right now. When you're looking at like a five minute chart or something, it looks kind of price is just slow grind. It's important to kind of zoom out and really see what's going on in this big picture. Here was that all time high sell off. We had the volatility pop we had probably. And I said this in the chat room. Top three best month of trading as far as price action and my trade plans that I've ever seen, right? I literally looked like an absolute genius at how good this trading was here in August. It was fantastic. And then starting here, the first month of September, we broke that supply zone. And ever since we broke, slow, it's like an extremely just slow, slow grind. We finally hit that big round number 3000 that I've been talking about. I figured those bulls were, wanna, were wanting to get that done and they got it just right at the close. You can see how crazy that 3000 is. And then of course we had Trump tweet so that we've now even pushed even higher. And we're now entering almost two month highs and pretty much getting right back into that all time high supply, right? So you can kind of see we're coming into that all time high supply. So it's gonna be big time decision time. Are these bears, clearly these bears held this in July and June in the summer. Are they going to be able to hold this again, right? We're coming up into a key, key level to end the rest of this year. And so it's going to be kind of uh, really interesting to see how this finishes. You can see how last December finished. It was just a huge sell-off, right? And so it's going to be interesting or not necessarily, it was December, but how the last year finished, huge sell-off on Christmas, right? The day after Christmas, just a huge surge. So it'll be interesting. I'm anticipating and I actually hope that we see a sell-off. That's what I'm wanting. I am uh, loading up on, a, on a, some few short positions uh, in my stock options. So I'm anticipating uh, kind of uh, some lower uh, movement going into the end of the year. And so I just wanted to show that so you can under, understand that even as a day trader, it's still super important to understand what's going on with this story and this structure here. And when you look here on the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, you can clearly see this grind. So we had a 15 day low and pretty much starting from about here, we haven't had too much of two sided price action. We had a little bit of move down there, but for the most part, just like super slow grind, 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 grind. Today on Slash ES was just absolutely terrible price action and just a completely slow grind higher up into 3000 like the bulls literally got to 3000 to the exact tick like they just pushed it look right into the close they go right up into 3000 you can see why we had that volume push boom get us into 3000 and then right here right here is where trump said that he's going to delay those tariffs and we have now pushed into really no structure whatsoever obviously you know, anything I want to do up here, I want to be looking for sell triggers. This plus one right here is going to be all time high, all time since the beginning of forever. And so, I mean, if you uh, basically any, you can pretty much do anything you want tomorrow in terms of you got resistance here, you got possible demand here, possible demand here, and it's just going to, 
you know, with, with not much structure, I'm not going to be and try and act like every, most nights I'm pretty spot on. I'm not going to act like I know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow because I don't. We got Trump saying things. We're nearing all-time high. Volatility is getting crushed. We're seeing really lower, slow volume. And this is just, it's its a tougher trading environment. I'm just going to tell you that right now, okay? And uh, But pretty much what I see, I got first resistance. I would say there's decent opportunity to push this back into 3,000. So if you want to use, you're about... You got plenty of profit opportunity. You could even use 3,010 as kind of the breakout, the line in the sand. And then these bears will likely want to fill that convergence back to 3,000. I wouldn't sell just yet. Let these bears show some strength first and then write them back down. I wouldn't look, I don't even know if I'll look for buy triggers tomorrow, but at a minimum, I'd want to be pulling back into here, which would actually be beyond a static negative one. Down here will be beyond a static negative one and a half. Slash and Q is pretty much the exact same. And uh, one big, uh, the difference though, is that right here is a really good, like fan, and I'm not necessarily difference, it's, it's, it's the similar concept, but this is a beautiful possible bear target. Coming back to where this origination of that Trump uh, two-week tariff delay spike came from, and what used to be resistance, see all of that? breakout and then now we got value very high set so i wouldn't sell just yet but if these bears can get through and start holding lower highs decent opportunity uh for some touch brackets or traditional futures decent profit potential and you don't have to be greedy holding all the way here i would use about a quarter deviation for your tp targets um slash ym pretty much the exact same uh, the big difference, obviously, is the negative 0.5 is that value very high. So this is like you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, if you were to use breakout, you would TP there at set, right? And then uh, slash RTY um, doesn't have too much of, uh, this one didn't get, didn't get too as affected from that Trump tweet. And so it's really not too, not that much profit potential to fill that convergence. I probably won't even trade this chart tomorrow as it's by far my least favorite. Uh, but don't forget that we do have the four, we do have deviations on the four major Forex pairs, which the Forex pairs actually have way better structure than the indices. So this might be my go-to tomorrow. And then we have deviations and value rate on crude oil as well. So we got nine charts. You also have this bottom one where you can do Aussie yen, pound yen, Euro yen, dollar CAD, dollar Swiss. Uh, they just won't have deviations, but you can trade lots of things to trade. Message me if you have any questions. You gotta take pictures of all of your tr of trades and post them in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.